Hello everyone, this is Rosemary again, and welcome to the podcast, Speak to My Heart, where we can have heart-to-heart conversations. Maybe you're not in the same room or area that I'm in, but yet there is a conversation, there is a relationship that we can have, maybe not physically present, but our hearts can be joined together because we all have experienced pain. We've all experienced uh, disappointment. We've all been uh, experiencing misunderstanding. But yet there's one who knows about uh, all about us and loves us anyway. And he has just given us this opportunity with arms wide open that we can come to him. And so I wanted to share my personal journey. And as I share my journey and share with you some of the things that God has, you know, put in my heart, spoken to my heart that's brought healing, restoration, purpose in my life. And hopefully you will be able to see by example that God sees your heart, that he doesn't look at you like people have a tendency to look at you. But he sees your heart. He sees whether it's broken, incomplete, where it's hardened, where it's been um, ignored, abused, but yet he wants to speak to your heart. He wants to speak to the real you. And he wants to, you to know him, his heart also for you. So I wanted to share something that happened years and years ago. I was sitting in the bathtub and I had my Bible on the floor next to me because a lot of times that was the times I had quiet and I was able to read and just relax in the tub. You have to understand those who know me personally and those who don't. I have been married almost 53 years this year. I'm a mother, biological mother of seven. My husband and I have nine. And back in the day when our younger children were small and they were close in age. So those times when I could get into the bathtub and relax, maybe it's during their nap time, that was very precious to me. So I had my Bible laying there, and I was sitting, laying back in the tub. I heard these words inside of me. Rise, shine, for thy light has come. And I thought, hmm, let me look. Let me see if I can find that. I didn't have a dictionary, a regular dictionary. But I said, let me put those words in my Bible dictionary and see if anything comes up. Well, I reached over to the side. I picked up my Bible to open it. And as soon as I opened it, it opened to Isaiah 60, chapter 60, verse 1. And this is what Isaiah 60 Verse 1 said, Rise, shine, for thy light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. That was a supernatural, not a coincidence, not by chance. It wasn't luck, but it was a supernatural encounter with the reality of God, that he sees me, that he knows me personally. And I didn't know then that that was his call upon my life, that he had a purpose and a plan for me. I was shocked. I didn't even know that that was in the scripture. And I began to look at it through the years, rise, shine. And one of the, I think it was a King James version, but 
out of the amplified version, it says, rise from the prostration. Now, prostrate means to lay flat, extend into the ground. Rise up, it said in that translation, from the prostration and depression that life circumstances would try to keep you in. For thy light has come. The light was more than just um, a flashlight light or flipping a switch and, and a light fixture shines light, but it was a human being. Jesus is the light of the world. He's the one that brings light where there's darkness. He's the one that brings um, understanding when there's confusion. He's the one that reveals the things that are hidden. So this word was telling me, Rosemary, rise up. And telling me that there are going to be times that circumstances, things happen in life that will cause you to just give up. Or as one person said to me, play dead. But to rise up out of that, it'll take maybe the strength that you didn't think you had. But God will give you the strength to rise up out of that. And to shine, to let his light, his love, what he's done in your life, what he's done in the lives of others others. Let that shine. Don't hide that under a bushel. Why have a light and then put it under a bushel? A light is to shine. It's to be put somewhere where that light will help others. And so he said, rise and shine for your light has come. The understanding I needed of who I was, that I was in a wonderful place. I, I'm I'm just thankful for being a wife and I'm thankful for being a mother. And and now I'm a grandmother and now I'm a great grandmother and I'm blessed and I I thank God for that. But he also was revealing there were other parts to me. There was a call in my life. There was something that he purposed that he placed in there from his heart to mine that he wanted me to shine. And I want to shine by his light, not my light, because my light can be dim. My light sometimes go out, whatever the situation, but the shine for my light has come. The light has come. And then he said something else in that scripture, that the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. And I looked up and I listened for meanings of glory, glory, the presence the power, and the goodness of God. That he wanted to demonstrate that. He wanted me to know him, his heart. Sometimes we have misconceptions on God and who he is and his purpose. And sometimes we only see part of the picture, not the full picture. And he wants us to see the full picture of who he is. And that's why he sent Jesus to show us God in the flesh. God with arms and legs and feet, body parts. He wanted us to see that. Being human beings, we don't see what's invisible. We don't hear always what's unhearable, if that's a word, unhearable. But he sent Jesus so that we could see him, see him and hear him, and we could know him. Jesus was the perfect representation of God, expressed image of God. He shined with God's glory, his presence, power, and goodness. He came to destroy the lies. He came to let us know truly what the heart of God was to reveal his love so much that he gave his very best to take our place. Think about it. It's like 
when you want to buy a car or you want to have a car and someone says, I'll buy that car for you and give it to you. And you say, no, I want to pay for it. I want to pay this enormous interest rate. I want to be in debt for six, seven years. Paying for a car or a vehicle that as soon as it leaves the lot, it depreciates. It lessens in value. Think about that. But that's what Jesus said. There was a price to be paid. There was a debt that was owed. And all of our goodness, and when we try to do our best, sometimes our best isn't good enough. But the heart of God was not, okay, you tried to do your best. It's not good enough. I'm done with you. No, he sent someone to pay that price for us. And we thank him for it. That's his heart. That is his heart to walk you through that journey. That it's his heart to reveal to you what he has placed inside of you, that you might find your purpose in this earth. And not only to be a blessing to yourself, but a blessing to others. And when I say blessing to yourself, that you may prosper, prosper uh, naturally, physically, spiritually, and financially. That's the heart of God. And that heart of God has been locked up. Sometimes it collects dust on a kit on a table in the living room or it's in a bookcase. It's words of life that not always read. It's almost like having the answer but ignoring it or don't know what the answer is. But Jesus came to give us the answer and not only give us the answer, but to be the answer. So this glory. This posture of rising up and shining, I want to speak that over your life like he spoke to mine. And I'm still learning. I haven't always, in fact, there's times I've put that word aside and forgot about it and got caught up in what was going on in my life. But I want to speak that word. I want that word to speak to you, to speak to your heart. That there is a glory, there's a presence, there's a power and a goodness of God that's available to you. That he wants to live his life through you. He wants to speak to your heart and he wants you to hear his. So, Father, I thank you again. What an honor, what a privilege to know you. And even in our weakness, God, you are there. You have an answer for us. And Father, you even understand that sometimes so many things are speaking to us that it's hard for us to hear. Let me say, it's hard for me to hear. It's hard for me to understand. And when I don't understand, I can say, Daddy, I don't understand. I don't get it. Yet you're so patient and kind that you will bring the answer. You will give the answer and you will help me to know your heart, to know your words, to know your motive. And I thank you for this opportunity to share with my friends. Though I might never see their face, yet I know that you have allowed me to place my heart on this podcast because you desire also to share yours. In Jesus' name, amen.